Yeah. All right, so me and Justo just made a, a side bet for the year. Whoever wins the first live tournament, 1K buy-in or larger, at least 50 player field. Um, the loser has to pay for a WSOP 1750 main event, but you also get 25% of that of that bullet, it's just to make it fun and fair, so, and make it friendly, right? Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> This week, I'm at Thunder Valley once again for the 2023 Champagne Series. Today, I'm playing a $240 buy-in. It's a 100K guaranteed prize pool, and I expect first place to be around $25,000. Let's go get a bag. For my first bullet in this $240 100k tournament, I decided to max late reg it with about 20 big blinds. The starting stack was 30k. I did not get the start that I was looking for. So here I am at 1500 big blind with 14.5k and it's about 10 big blinds and I have aces on the button. The hijack has 30k. He opens to 4k. I have a pretty easy decision here on the button with about 10 big blinds. I go all in for 14.5k. He ends up making the call with ace jack offsuit, and here's what happens. Oh. Good luck, me. Oh shit, that looks scary. I thought it was too bad. <laughs> I thought it was too jacked for sure. Oh, I'm teasing him. I'm teasing him. Find one. On this next hand, action folds to me in the cutoff. I have a pretty standard all in here with nine big blinds with eight nine suited. My friend Jeff in on the button wakes up with a hand. He goes all in for 21k, which slightly covers me, and we see a flop. Good luck me. <laughs> yeah, good luck me. Like I gotta document this. Oh club. I wish I had an ace. Ooh, it's a sweat card. Ooh, yeah. Club 8-9. Oh my gosh. I'm a luck box. This next hand is a very interesting one, and I got out of line. I don't normally get out of line like this. It's extremely rare, and so that's why I'm going to share this hand to walk you through my thought process in-game and also post-game after reviewing it with peers. So for starters, my opponent in this hand is on the button. He has me slightly covered. My reads on him currently are that he seems inexperienced and overly cautious when put to the test. I had just seen him hesitate to make a call with pocket jacks, which was a big overpair on a very low dry flop. This tells me he probably doesn't understand range as well and probably doesn't read board texture as well. So on this flop, he puts in a seabed of 6k and it's a pretty weak board, and I feel like he's probably over C betting here in position. And because of everything that I've already shared about this guy, I think that he's going to be under defending check raises here. So this is where I get out of line, and I make a check raise with complete air, which is something I never do. And even though I probably wouldn't do this line again, if I did, I would probably choose a larger sizing than I did, because I don't think I raised enough here to get him to fold. In hindsight, I think the better play is to actually donk lead this flop because it's better for my range and I could probably size small and he'd probably fold a lot. When he makes this call, I'm probably giving up on a lot of turns. Things get really strange though on this turn when I actually turn some equity with a pair. If he floated me with overs, I have some protection with my king. It would make sense to check because I think he's checking back a lot of turns here and I can get to showdown, but I am just not convinced that this type of player is someone who would be floating with overs on my check raise. And so I'm thinking that he could have a 5x or 7x, and I decide to bomb it here to try to get the better 5x hands and maybe some 7x hands to fold. Also could potentially get ace 3 to fold, which is something that I think he could call on the flop. And if he calls, then I... Should have outs, but he folds. Guys, try not to play this hand like I just did. 
A few hands later, I run into Jeff's pocket jacks with my ace queen, and he wins the flip. He flops a full house. I did turn a queen, but didn't river the queen, so he doubles up through me. Alright, alright, I won't unsubscribe from you yet. <laughs> And shortly after that, I get it in way good with Ace Queen against King Queen, and this is the result. This is King Queen. No diamonds. Uh, no Jack or King. <laughs> okay, time to fire a second bullet, I guess. All right, it's break time again. Um, I have about 70K, which is only 11 big blinds, and probably got about two hours or so left to play tonight, and then hopefully a bag. So that brings us to the pot of the night. We're about 10 players away from money and bagging. I have Ace King under the gun. I raise it up to 16K, get two callers. This is already a big pot, and it's multi-way. And I just love this flop. I flop top pair, top kicker. I can charge all the straight draws. I can charge all the weaker kings. I bet 35k. They both call. So this is a massive 169k pot now. But I hate this turn card. King Jack gets there. Queen 10 gets there. I think the correct thing to do here is to check and then if plus one goes all in, um, I would be calling off 107k to win 276k which is better than two and a half to one odds. Um, so it's going in no matter what most likely in game I talked myself into going all in instead of checking because I knew I was probably calling anyways But that's not the correct logic and it's a mistake King Jack. <laughs> He got me go covered by 2k <laughs> So I get that big double up just so that I can bust on the very next hand. The guy had me covered by 2,000. So that's it. I'll be back for the 600 main event in two days. What's up guys? I've made the decision that because the main event that I just played had so many crazy, interesting and exciting hands, I'm going to break that off into a separate episode for next week, so be sure to stay tuned and watch that. You're not gonna wanna miss it. There's just some insane hands that in situations that I've never been in before. Um, really exciting. So, um, so to finish off this episode, I'm gonna play the 300 freeze out right now. Let's go. I finally get Pocket Kings dealt to me for the first time this week. Plus one limps. He's short stacked and he's been limping a few times already. I raised to 3k, I have 20 big blinds deep, the button calls, plus one goes all in for 10k, I go all in for 20k, the button over calls 20k, and we got a big three-way pot with a side pot. Showdown, please. Can you beat that? Oh, 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 there it is. There it is, come on. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, my god. Oh. Spade, Spade. Just kidding. Daddy got him. <laughs> Daddy got him. Baby, baby. 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 I know. Oh, yes, yeah, so I bought the. That's it, that's it. Thank you. You're, you're in the vlog. <laughs> you don't never underestimate Daddy. <laughs> Daddy got you. <laughs> well, if I win. An orbit or two later, I'm down to seven and a half big blinds. I'm under the gun. I go all in with King 10 offsuit. I get called by Ace King. I don't improve. And that wraps up this series for me. Don't forget to check back next week's episode to see how I did in the main event. Spoiler alert, I did pretty well. All right, so that's that. I had about, I had less than 10 big blinds under the gun, so I went all in with King 10 off, got called by Ace King, and I am done with this series. So coming up next, next week, watch the main event episode, and then next week I also have the World Series Poker coming up. See you guys later.